Excellence Professeur Thierry, représentant du ministre de la Santé, Son Excellence Madame Khun Sakuna, représentant du ministère de l'Éducation, euh, Jeunesse et Sport, Son Excellence Monsieur Jean-François Demazier, ambassadeur de France au Cambodge, Monsieur Dominique Fresland, de l'ambassade de l'ambassade du Cambodge, professeur Vincent Dubert, directeur de l'Institut Pasteur 
Cambodge, Mr. Yuvi Morawet, founding chairman of the International Peace Foundation, Professor Francois Barre Sinusi, Nobel laureate for medicine, distinguished guests, dear participants, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. First, on behalf of the University of Health Science, I wish to welcome, warmly welcome Excellencies, distinguished guests and participants to the bridge dialogue toward a culture of peace presented today by Professor Francois Barre Sinusi on the topic Future Challenge in HIV AIDS Prevention and Therapy. The, unit, the University of Health Science is very proud to be associated with the Institute Pasteur Cambodge to host such a memorable scientific event. This is a second bridge dialogue toward a culture of peace event held at the university. The first event was held two months ago with Professor Thornstein Wiesel on the topic Science for Peace. We are therefore very thankful to Mr. U.V. Morawet, founding chairman of the National Peace Foundation for selecting the University of High Science to host the two important events. We strongly believe that Excellencies, distinguished guests and participants will actively debate with Professor Francois Marie Sinusi, an eminent scientist and Nobel Prize laureate, on what will be the major challenge of HIV AIDS prevention and therapy, and especially how we could overcome these challenges for the better health and well-being of people in Cambodia and worldwide. Finally, I wish to thank Professor Tikrui, Mrs. Uh, Pung Sakuna, Excellencies, colleagues, distinguished guests and participants for your participation in today's event. Ceci dit, je tiens particulièrement à remercier son Excellence Monsieur l'Ambassadeur pour l'honneur accordé à l'Université des Sciences et de la Santé pour votre présence dans ce dans cette dialogue. Et je tiens aussi à remercier Madame le Professeur Françoise Barré Sinoussi d'aller nous partager vos découvertes et expériences dans le domaine de la prévention et prise en charge dans le fléau mondial qui est le SIDA. Merci. Good afternoon. Uh, I apologize. I will speak in French, but I will give afterwards a short notice translation in English. Excellence, Monsieur l'Ambassadeur, Mesdames et Messieurs les Professeurs, chers collègues, Mesdames et Messieurs, l'événement que nous célébrons aujourd'hui a été promu par Bridge pour faciliter les dialogues pour la paix. Je pense que l'événement particulier qui nous réunit aujourd'hui en présence du professeur Françoise barré sinoussi lauréate du prix Nobel de médecine, et non seulement de promouvoir un dialogue pour la paix, mais également pour la science, et également pour nous transmettre un message d'espoir. Les chercheurs comme Françoise barré sinoussi sont des missionnaires. Nous sommes nourris dans une culture créative et rigoureuse, ouvrant la voie de la connaissance et du progrès qui aboutit parfois et dans le cas de Françoise barré aussi, à l'innovation. Cette voie est remplie d'embûches que les chercheurs apprennent à dépasser, à contourner, à détruire, grâce à un travail sans relâche et déterminé, grâce à un esprit curieux et passionné, mais aussi grâce à un comportement généreux et humble. Et je pense que Françoise barré aussi a tous ses atouts. Je la connais bien, ça fait 32 ans que je la connais, et euh, elle était à l'époque enseignante au cours de virologie à l'Institut Pasteur à Paris. Elle revenait juste des États-Unis. J'étais élève de Françoise barré aussi à l'époque. Elle était déjà engagée dans la formation et l'enseignement. 
et elle est devenue une force vive pour l'Institut Pasteur, pour le réseau des instituts Pasteur qui comporte 32 instituts et elle sillonne sans relâche le monde entier et ses instituts. Peu après la découverte du, sida en, du virus du sida en 1983, Françoise a donc eu la chance, comme elle le dit si bien, d'avoir été dans les hôpitaux et d'avoir vu les malades, et d'avoir compris qu'il y avait quelque chose à faire pour eux. Pas toute seule, non, mais justement d'engager de nombreuses personnes et pour cela, elle a essayé d'apporter un soutien pour le soulagement de ces malades et améliorer leurs conditions de vie. Le professeur Françoise Barré-Sinoussi est entièrement dévoué à son laboratoire à l'Institut Pasteur à Paris. Elle est dévouée au réseau des instituts Pasteur dont elle est euh, le, euh, le, professeur, le président d'honneur, la présidente d'honneur. Elle est dévouée à la NRS euh, dont elle est la vice-présidente et coordinatrice pour la région Nord pour de nombreux programmes en Asie et en Afrique. Elle est dévouée à SIDAction, dont elle est membre du conseil d'administration. Elle est enfin dévouée à de nombreux programmes favorisant l'accès aux médicaments des malades atteints du SIDA. Et malgré tout, elle est toujours là et toujours disponible. Car pour elle, il y a toujours plus à faire, plus à inventer, plus à trouver et à entreprendre pour reculer les frontières de la maladie. Pour cela, Françoise a su créer le dialogue nécessaire entre les médecins, les chercheurs, les patients et la population. C'est une femme d'action et c'est une femme de passion. Donc, je sais, Françoise, que tu as une partie de ton cœur au Cambodge. Tu as porté beaucoup au peuple Khmer et à ceux qui souffrent de leur, dans leur corps et dans leur cœur. Et chacune de tes visites ici au Cambodge détruit un peu plus le mur de l'indifférence et apporte un message d'espoir. Alors pour ça, merci beaucoup d'être encore avec nous aujourd'hui pour être, nous apporter ce dialogue de la paix, de la science et de l'espoir, et de partager avec nous ta passion. So just some words in English, if I have time. So uh, the event we celebrate today has been promoted by Bridges to facilitate dialogues towards a culture of peace. I think that this particular event today in the presence of uh, Professor Francoise Barré-Sinouzi, Nobel Prize of Medicine, is not only to forwarding a message of science, of peace, but also to translating a message of hope. Scientists are missionaries, educated with a culture of creativity and rigor to pave the road of progress and knowledge, which may then lead to discoveries. This road is full of pitfalls that scientists learn to overpass, bypass our ways, and their defense is made of hard work, determination, curiosity, patience, hope, and chance, but also generosity and humility. So I think that Francoise Baez-Sinoussi has all those assets. So I would just say that I met Francoise 30 years ago when I was in Pasteur student, and she was a teacher already coming back from the United States, just before discovering this HIV. And uh, she, she has been traveling through Africa, Asia, to meet the people in the hospital, to make the bridge between the clinicians and uh, the scientists, the patients and the population. So uh, Professor Françoise Benoussinoussi is also committed to her lab and the researchers She is committed to the Pasteur Institute, International Pasteur Institute, uh, of which she is the president of honor. She is committed to INRS, which is the French National Agency for AIDS, of which she is the vice president and coordinator for programs in Asia and Africa. She is also committed to SIDAction, which is, uh, for which she is uh, the board member. She is uh, also uh, committed to many association foundation and several programs providing access to treatment. But she's always disponible and ready to help, still. When Francois said, I should do something, while visiting a hospital in Africa in 93, actually she did a lot and pioneered many actions that were beneficial to the daily life of AIDS patients. 
Professor Françoise Marini-Sinoussi has built up bridges between clinicians, researchers, patients, and population. She lives in action, she lives in passion. Françoise, I told her that she has part of his, his heart here in Cambodia, and she came very often to help uh, Khmer people to have access to uh, treatment and to have a better life and uh, also to uh, break breaks the, the, the wall of indifference and brings a mes uh, to bring a message of hope. So thank you very much again, Francoise, for being with us. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, friends. Welcome to the third ASEAN event series, Bridges, Dialogues Towards a Culture of Peace. Bridges is facilitated by the International Peace Foundation, a non-political and non-religious foundation under the common patronage of 21 Nobel Peace Prize laureates based in Vienna. The events are hosted in cooperation with various local partners, including the country's major universities. Since November 2009, Bridges has been continuously held in Cambodia, involving the particip participation of Nobel laureates from all fields. The third ASEAN series of Bridges is an independent contribution to the decade for culture of peace and nonviolence, which was initiated by the United Nations General Assembly. It follows the series of 350 Bridges events, which have already been held in the Thailand, the Philippines, and Malaysia since 2003. Increasing ethnic, political, religious, and social conflicts, and the helplessness to respond to them without further stimulating the spiral of violence, show us peace is not a given good. It has to be constantly learned, experienced, and created anew. Peace is not a passive state. Peace is a process which needs time, attention, and the participation of all of us. And peace begins with education. The seeds of peace need to be planted in schools, in universities, in the new generation. This is why the International Peace Foundation cooperates with major schools and universities as well as with UNESCO in realizing this Bridges program. We believe in the importance of the education and scientific community of Cambodia by bringing the knowledge of Nobel laureates for peace, physics, chemistry, medicine and economics to this country. What these highly in demand Nobel laureates normally see of a country are airports and hotels. They deliver their lecture, stay for one night and leave. We have invited them here not only to speak, but to share, to engage, to listen. They come here not for one event or one day only, but for various their dialogues and events because of their real interest in building bridges, because of their real interest in Cambodia. It is our hope that these are not the first and final visits of these Nobel laureates, but visits with many fruitful returns to build long-lasting friendship and to start, for instance, research programs or other forms of cooperation with the local universities and schools. This is how Bridges could develop into a long-term and sustainable success for Cambodia to strengthen as education as a basis for peace. I thank the University of Health Sciences of Cambodia, the Pasteur Institute of Cambodia and the organizing committee of today's event for taking up this opportunity of our cooperation and for inviting today the 2008 Nobel Laureate for Medicine, Professor Françoise Barré Sinoussi, to this prestigious university. We look forward to her keynote speech and to, to her important in contribution to build bridges. 
Sam Auckland. Et mon discours sera le plus mauvais et le plus improvisé de ceux que vous allez entendre. Ce sera aussi le plus court, donc je vais essayer de me rattraper comme ça. Euh, au nom de tous, euh, nous sommes très heureux d'accueillir Françoise barré prix Nobel de médecine, et surtout, euh, grande amie du Cambodge, qui nous fait l'amitié très régulièrement de venir en escale à Phnom Penh pour travailler sur des projets extrêmement importants de coopération scientifique et médicale sur des sujets qui me dépassent, madame, mais euh, mon, mon expérience ancienne fait que je sais euh, combien ce que vous faites est, est important et fructueux. Donc tout le monde a hâte de vous entendre, euh, donc je vous souhaite la bienvenue et j'arrête mon intervention ici. Merci d'être venu. D'abord, je, je présente mes salutations à tout le monde, spécialement à Excellence Madame Fonsakona, secrétaire d'État au ministère de l'Éducation, à son Excellence Monsieur Jean-François Mazière, de l'ambassadeur de France au Cambodge, professeur Om Sophan, recteur de l'Université de Sciences de Santé, professeur Vincent Dubol, Dubel, directeur de l'Institut de Pasteur au Cambodge, Professeur Françoise barré sinoussi lauréat de prix de Nobel en médecine. Monsieur U.V. Moravet, Chairman of the International Peace Foundation, distingué invité et participant, Madame et Monsieur. Cambodia is one of the few countries in the world which has achieved millennium department goal six to halt and begin to reverse the spread of HIV by 2015. In Cambodia, HIV prevalence has fallen to an estimate 0.7% among the adult population in 2009, down from a high of 2% in 1998. The Ministry of Health of the Kingdom of Cambodia in close collaboration with development partner and other government institutions has undertaken intensive work to ensure Cambodia reach universal access target for HIV prevention, treatment, care and support by end of 2010. Although HIV prevalence in Cambodia has considerably declined, HIV AIDS is still a major challenge for the Ministry of Health. We are privileged today to have such a distinguished researcher of, a from, of Professor Francois Barre Sinoussi, Nobel Prize laureate for medicine for her great discovery with Professor Luc Montagnier of the human immunodeficiency virus HIV to share her knowledge and experiences with us. 
Her discovery has allowed identification of important details in its replication cycle and how the virus interacts with its host. This discovery shows the urgent need of a diagnostic test to control the disease. It opened the door for medical professionals in the prevention of therapy of HIV and AIDS. I am looking forward to hearing Professor Francois Barre Sinoussi to share her knowledge and experiences with all of us. Professor Francois Barre Sinoussi is going to present this afternoon future challenges in HIV AIDS prevention and therapy, a topic for crucial importance for the Ministry of Health and all of us. On behalf of the Ministry of Health, I solemnly declare the public dialogue toward a culture of peace entitled Future Challenges in HIV AIDS Prevention and Therapy now officially open. Thank you. Excellence, Monsieur le représentant du ministère de la Santé, Monsieur l'ambassadeur de France, Monsieur le recteur, chers amis, chers collègues, c'est un véritable plaisir d'être là à nouveau aujourd'hui au Cambodge. Vincent de Bell, le directeur de l'Institut Pasteur, disait tout à l'heure qu'une partie de mon cœur était au Cambodge. Je peux réellement confirmer ses propos. Après 15 ans de collaboration avec ce pays, il est vrai que je suis particulièrement attaché et que lorsque j'arrive ici au Cambodge, je me sens un petit peu à la maison. I will move now to English, of course. Otherwise, Uwe will not be very happy with me. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, Excellency, dear friends, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's my real pleasure to be here again in Cambodia and would like really to thank the International Peace Foundation for inviting me to participate to uh, this uh, new uh, Dialogue Bridges events uh, here at the University of uh, Health Sciences in, in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Vincent de Bell was saying that the part, the director of Pasteur Institute was saying that a part of my heart is here in Cambodia and I really can confirm after 15 years working together with the Cambodian colleagues here, I, I really feel home when I'm here in Cambodia. And of course, as some of you know, uh, it was really a wonderful uh, event when uh, on the 6th of October 2008, it turned out that I was in Cambodia when uh, the announcement of the Nobel Prize nomination was made and uh, I must tell you that was really touching for me to see all colleagues here, especially Cambodian colleagues but also representative of patients coming to me and we were so happy just to share together these events. And for me, this nomination, since it was made, I must say that I never really considered that it was a Nobel nomination of Françoise Barré Sinoussi, but it was really a recognition of a whole community of uh, scientists, uh, 
researchers, clinicians, healthcare workers and patients and representatives of patients really working together, fighting together against these uh, deadly epidemics in the beginning. So when uh, Uwe invited me to participate to uh, these events, I really accepted very rapidly. Why? It because first of all, the aim of the intern is something that I'm very sensitive of. Why? It's because, as Uwe mentioned, education is uh, one of the first component of peace. Education for equity, education for respecting human rights, and all of this is part of the go of the way forward peace. So I said, okay, it's a, maybe a good opportunity to share, to share with uh, the younger generation at the university, to share with the younger generation in high school in, in Cambodia, my own experience my own experience of dialogues between different communities for the benefit of humankind working on this uh, deadly HIV, deadly uh, disease that uh, unfortunately we had to face uh, 30 years ago. So it's why I accepted and I will start my keynote speech by some very shortly of the history, because I think, uh, especially for you, the young generation that are in this room, history is important. I have the next slide. History is important. Next slide. This is a problem of technology, it's a problem of dialogue, you know, between, <laughs> between probably computers. <laughs> Such a, a, a deadly uh, disease affecting the human beings. What is important is the impulse of solidarity for population all over the world. Indeed, we had uh, the first alarming si signals of an emerging epidemic, as it was said before, in 1981, where the first cases of, uh, of patients dying from uh, a newly recognized disease that was strongly affecting the immune defense was recognized indeed in the homosexual population first. And this was really the, the start. The start of uh, it was really a start of mobilization, reactivity, uh, between uh, clinicians, epidemiologists that were first recognizing uh, the disease in the United States. But it was also those clinicians that contacted us at the Pasteur Institute uh, at the end of 1982 because they were recognizing the first, the first uh, cases of uh, patients dying of uh, this new emerging disease in their hospital in France. So us as a basic scientists were really mobilized by our colleagues 
uh, from the hospital. That is a thing that you should keep in mind, and you should keep in mind, how much importance important is interaction between the clinician and the researchers. How much is important also the interaction, as it was mentioned before by Vincent, the interaction between clinician, researchers, and patients, and I will come back to that point. If I, what I would like to, to say also on, on that slide as well is the fact that uh, indeed in the early 80s we already knew the mode of uh, transmission of the agent that was responsible for this deadly disease as indicated by the first cases of infection in homosexual population and, and, and then re the recognition also of uh, the disease in hemophiliac as well as as well as in uh, infants born from from in from mothers that were presenting with AIDS, but uh, we made a mistake at that time, and this is the reason I I was to, I want to mention that a mistake that is still today one reason of uh, in inequities between between different people affected by this infection. This uh, mistake that we made, we forgot. We forgot one age at that time. You can see on this slide, on the bottom of this slide, that uh, of course we called some people call this disease at that time the four H disease, homosexual, hemophiliac, heroinoman, because uh, because. IV drug users were already recognized as affected by this uh, disease. But look, we, we forgot one age, the heterosexual infection. So as a result, still today, people have in mind that it's a disease that uh, is affecting only some communities some communities that are very often by the government leaders. We should keep in mind, and I will come back on that point later on, this is one of the major obstacles. Realize for us at Pasteur by our colleagues, clinicians that are on, on this slide, they came to us and said, you as retrovirologists working with this family of viruses for years in animals, do you think that this newly recognized disease could be due to family, the first human <coughs> retroviruses was recognized very recently in 1981 and was affecting the subpopulation of lymphocytes called T lymphocytes that were strongly affected in, uh, uh, in the patients with AIDS. And we say, we say, this is an interesting idea. We personally don't think that HTLV could be the, the virus itself because this virus is not killing the lymphocyte, but in opposite, is uh, inducing the proliferation of the lymphocyte is why this virus is causing leukemia. However, we say let's, let's test the hypothesis. Let's test the hypothesis because we have the technology in our hand. It was another important issue, the progress in technology. And we had also more and more scientific knowledge on this family of viruses indicating that uh, sometimes this family of retroviruses can cause immune deficiency. So we say, okay, let's go, let's try. But we told our colleague, the clinician, in particular Willy, Willy Rosenbaum, look Willy, Willy, I, I don't think uh, the best uh, solution is to see 
to try to find the virus in patients that are with AIDS already. Because you just mentioned to us that they don't have any more lymphocyte, CD4 lymphocyte, when they are dying from AIDS. It, so it's a worse condition to try to identify the virus. And he answered to us, but before, they have this swollen lymph node uh, before developing AIDS. And I can ask if you like one patient that I'm thinking of whether he would like to participate to the research. That was the first cases of one patient really contributing to the progress of science. It's really because these first patients first patient who unfortunately died a few years after accepted, kindly accepted, a lymph node biopsy for the purpose of research only. Another important decision that we took together is the fact that uh, we will not check for HTLV, otherwise we will have waited in, in, in the culture for weeks to see whether uh, the cells were transforming. We decide to look every two or three days into the culture to see whether we will be able to detect something resembling to a retrovirus. And it turned out that was a good decision. So the reason on that slide, um, indicated no dogma when you start research program. You should have hypothesis, of course, and research is generally hypothesis driven, of course, but don't have any dogma. Otherwise, you will never make any discovery. So it's uh, based on, on this very nice dialogue between us that uh, we made this first report in May 20, 1983, rep describing for the first time a virus that we called at that time lymphadenopathy associated virus because the virus was isolated from the lymph node biopsies. And it's later on that this virus turned out to be named human immune deficiency virus. And we are also already report in this article that it was no cross-reactivity between the, the other, the only other human retroviruses uh, known at that time, HTLV, and the virus that we obtained from this uh, first patient. But that was not sufficient at all to prove that this virus that we just isolated from this first uh, patient was the cause of AIDS. So we realized at that time that uh, it was an emergency. An emergency that needed mobilization, reactivity. Reactivity to try to stop as fast as possible first thing, transmission by blood, and blood derivative. And for that, of course, we had first to convince, to convince the scientific community, and, but to convince also the population affected or at risk for this disease, but to convince also the authorities that the virus we just had in our hand was the cause of this uh, new emerging disease. For that, we had to establish the, 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 the link between the virus and the disease itself. And we had to start uh, at the same time to characterize this virus, to characterize additional virus isolates. What does that mean? That means that for us, at the Pasteur Institute, we had to stop immediately any, the other research program that we are going on. We had also to mobilize, to mobilize other, other scientists were working in other discipline. We had to mobilize other clinicians, other patients to work with us to respond as fast as possible to this disease. 
We had also to mobilize the private sector. To mobilize the private sector because as a researchers, of course, we uh, could and we did establish the first serological test in, at a laboratory level. But that means that we had to develop this test for commercialization. That was not our specialty as scientists. So that means that we had to mobilize the private sector, and it turned out that uh, we had a very strong and nice uh, partnership, efficient partnership, with a company uh, called Sanofi Diagnostic Pasteur. And it turned out that uh, in July 1985, so that means, let's say, two years after the discovery of the virus, we already had the test commercialized for uh, the benefit of uh, the prevention of transmission by blood. So in my mind, I think HIV research has been since the real beginning a kind of research from the bed of the patient itself, himself to the bench and to return as fast as possible to the bedside. We are speaking a lot these days about translational research, multidisciplinary research, which is a, a priority, certainly. But I think HIV AIDS, it's a best example of translational research. Of course, we uh, had to make basic science to know better the virus that we isolate, the biology of this virus, the, 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 the genetics of this virus, of patients affected by this infection. So the virus resulted in the development of diagnostic tests for prevention. But that was also the first step only through information to convince people that were unfortunately diagnosed HIV.
the vision of Louis Pasteur that indeed research, research is one component which is essential together with uh, intervention action on site for strengthening the local inf infrastructure. Strengthening lo the local infrastructure, that means to uh, build capacity through education, through training, training of health workers, to tra for, through training and education of the civil societies, also uh, to strengthen the organization of the health system in the country. For me, those uh, three components are a key issue uh, for the development. And us, as scientists, we are the organization, non-governmental organization, and UN agents to local authorities. As a result, I think it has been a real mob mobilization and response of the national authorities here, of the national authorities, the prevalence and the number of people infected by HIV would have increased over time in Cambodia. This is not the situation. You can see the black curve here showing that uh, the prevalence and incidence of infection in of infection of HIV in that country stopped and uh, slowed down at one point. When we started, it was about 15% uh, of HIV infection is pro in prostitutes here in Cambodia. Of course, it was with support, with support of other other international organization. It's also, in my opinion, because here in Cambodia, the national authorities accepted and understood why it was important to have also research associated to action. Of course, this, those, this research provided evidence I mentioned one of it is the Médecins Sans Frontières program here that was first implementing antiretroviral treatment here in Cambodia, showing that uh, the effectiveness of antiretroviral treatment, more than 90% effectiveness of this MSF ARV program after two years in Cambodia giving the data to the national authorities and probably influencing the, re what the decision of uh, the national authorities to start a program of access to antiretroviral treatment to all patients that need to be treated here in Cambodia. And that happened. That happened. Because today, today we have uh, more than 37,000 patients that are on heart here in Cambodia. And Cambodia, to my knowledge, in that region, is the first country that will be success successful in access to antiretroviral treatment for all patients that need to be treated in 2010. So it can work. It can work if you have political willingness. Of course, that's not sufficient. That's not sufficient because you can see this curve. This curve showing that uh, today, it's only overall in uh, resource-limited countries, only about 40% of patients that need to be treated that are on treatment. And you can see on the slide, for each two new persons starting the treatment, there is five new cases of infection. What does that mean? That means that we have to reduce the incidence 
of infection, and we have to improve our effort for the access to the treatment to all. When we are speaking about 40% of patients in need of ARV, it's only based on patients starting out in patients with 200 CD4 count. Now the WHO guideline recommend to start earlier. Of course, it has been a wonderful international effort summarized on, on this slide. Through first, uh, you can see on this slide commitment of UNAIDS, commitment of uh, different the World Bank, commitment of different foundations, including the Gates Foundation, uh, the Clinton Foundation, the B Bush Foundation, and, and so on. Uh, and and, of course, the nice decision of the United Nations, the decision of the G8 leaders to fund the Global Fund for the access of treatment for all in 2010. However, we are all worried these days. We are all worried, first of all, because the international G8 leaders did not entirely respect their commitments yet. And of course we have the economical crisis these days. And of course we are not sure at all that uh, the replenishment at the end of 2010 by the rich country will be will be uh, the one that we expect. That means that we have to convince, convince the rich country, convince and enlarge probably to the G20 nation the commitment and the promise, the promise to help others. We already know that uh, the Global Fund cannot support all the programs today of access to treatment in some countries in the world. And I'm really concerned when I go in some countries in Africa and they told me we don't have any uh, funding from the Global Fund. We just have funding for one year to make sure that we can continue the treatment of patients that are on treatment, but we cannot enroll new patients on treatment that need to be treated. So that means, if I mention that, it's because we should continue the dialogue with political leaders, it's our responsibility, us as scientists, it's our responsibility, you clinician, health worker, to make pressure at international level on the rich country for respecting their commitment and even for improving their commitment for the benefit of all in the world. We also need to create and implement certainly new funding strategy and one of it that uh, for which indeed my country France was uh, created several years ago. A tax on air ticket. A tax on air ticket that can be used for HIV AIDS patients in particular infants and as you know the UNITED was created on the basis of these taxes and a part of this funding is go going to the Clinton Foundation for the benefit of infants that are infected by HIV. So we need certainly to think and to, to have new funding strategy for the future. 
So we need certainly political commitment and uh, it's all for all of us, it's our responsibility to make pressure at political level. But still, still 30 years after uh, the discovery of the disease, still we need to make new discovery, new scientific findings. 30 years after the discovery of the disease, research priority are still prevention, care and treatment. Prevention, care and treatment because we have to face the problem of co-infection, in particular in the developing world, regarding co-infection of HIV and tuberculosis, co-infection of HIV and hepatitis, co-infection of uh, HIV and cytomegalovirus and, uh, and so on. So, and how to improve the treatment of those co-infections, we have to work on it. We have to also work and anticipate even here in the developing countries, complications on long term art, art, and I will say a word on it. And we have to continue to make progress even in basic science to understand better the, the establishment and the persistence of HIV infection uh, in the body. We have to understand better the very early event during the, what we call the acute phase of infection, the very first hours after infection where everything is decided in uh, exposed infected individual. We know that HIV is capable to induce very early on abnormal signals that will result, resu result in immune activation, immune activation which is one determinant of the evolution to AIDS. We know that this virus and component of this virus is capable very rapidly in the first hours after infection to alter the cross toll between cells of our innate and specific immunity and we know that's important for understanding better the mechanism of protection that the vaccine should induce and we know also that the host genetic is important in this disease. We also need to understand better the interaction between viral factors and cellular partners if we want to develop for tomorrow new innovative therapeutic strategy, new innovative vaccine strategy. After more than two decades, still there is gaps in HIV treatment. We have two profiles, let's say, today. We have the profile that you still have, unfortunately, in resource-limited country of AIDS-associated morbidity. And we need, as I said before, to get drugs for the, those people we need, who need to, to be treated. And the second profile is the one that we have in, in my country, in the rich country, where patients are on heart, long-term heart for life, who are starting to see what we call the non-AIDS associated morbidity with uh, complication, high complication due to resistance to antiretroviral treatment, but not only due on long-term treatment to metabolic disorders, including cardiovascular disease, premature aging, such as Alzheimer's disease in young, still young individual HIV-positive and treatment. We are seeing more and more lymphoma.